Penn and Teller are stage magicians uh, who have done a, a great bit of work in uh, critiquing frauds for those who claim to be, uh, have su supernatural powers. But recently they've taken on the creation and intelligent design movement and I wonder if their stage magic can be used to show that they are not in the proper perspective on this. We'll learn more about this on The Gary DeMar Show. Just past, this past week, uh, I was in Las Vegas. Uh, I know a ministry in Las Vegas. There are Christians in Las Vegas, and we were there on a, uh, a fundraising uh, event, uh, trying to raise money for a number of, of events. And while we were there, we have a friend who is in the entertainment business and got us uh, tickets to a David Copperfield uh, show. And I've always been interested in, in stage magic I've read uh, many biographies on Harry Houdini, uh, who, whose original name is Eric Weiss. And so I was uh, thrilled to be able to, to watch uh, someone like David Copperfield up, up close. And he did some very amazing tricks, and they are tricks. Um, no modern day magician today claims to have supernatural powers. David Copperfield certainly doesn't. It's a trick. Uh, you can sit there all night long and, and try to figure out how he did it in a couple of the shows. Uh, I think we, I, we, we did, I was there with two other friends, we did figure out how he did a particular trick, although not all of the aspects of it. Well, when you step outside the, the, the mall where, where we were, uh, there was a bus that went by and it had a big advertisement on there for Penn and Teller. Um, Penn, Gillette, and Raymond Teller are like David Copperfield, stage magicians, although they do a different type of act. Uh, theirs is a mix of comedy, irreverence, and lots of skill. They're very, very good at what they do. They're also known for exposing quacks, frauds, and claims of the supernatural in the tradition of Harry Houdini and James uh, Randi. And they also have a show on Showtime. I don't know if it runs anymore. It's called BS, and they use the, 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 the more earthy language uh, for that. Uh, they have ventured into the realm of politics by taking on global warming, gun control, PETA, the war on drugs, uh, safe, safety hysteria, recycling, and anything that strikes their fancy. Uh, now, Penn Gillette is a self-avowed atheist. He has Nevada license plates that are customized to read atheist and godless, and sometimes they sign autographs with there is no God. Uh, and one of their BS episodes took on their creation and intelligent design movements. Um, in order to set the stage for my critique of their methodology of exposing creationism and intelligent design, a little background information will be helpful. Uh, first off, uh, Harry Houdini, James Randi, Penn and Teller aren't the first to take on uh, claims of the supernatural. You can go back, uh, there's a book by Reginald Scott that was published in the 16th century called The Discovery of Witchcraft. And he exposed the witch-burning craze of the time. He also applied his observational skills by explaining how feats of magic that many uh, people believe were displays of the supernatural were accomplished by sleight of hand. He even takes on the Egyptian uh, so-called magicians. And he makes the same uh, observation I do. It would, have been, um, it would have been a display of their ability for supernatural powers for these court magicians uh, to turn the, uh, the, the bloody water into, into clear water. They did not do that. Uh, they, they would have shown their supernatural powers uh, by actually uh, getting rid of uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the frogs. They, they didn't do that. They had no supernatural powers. Any little trick they did was done by sleight of hand, and that was the point of Reginald Scott's uh, work. Um, he wrote, if they could not hurt the frogs, why should we think that they could make them? Such things as we are being bewitched to imagine have no truth at all, either in action or essence, besides the bare imagination. And so he, he, he took on this idea that, uh, that, that people have these supernatural powers. And Thomas Abey was, uh, was, was another person who wrote Candle in the Dark or a Treatise Concerning the Nature of Witches and Witchcraft, published in 1656. 
AD also published a perfect dis uh, discovery of witches and the doctrines of devils in the 17th century. And um, his point is, and uh, the same point of, um, of, of Scott, uh, was that if the Bible had been followed, we never would have had the witchcraft trials. Um, now, uh, so modern debunking of claims of the supernatural were, were, were standard, standardized by Harry Houdini. There are lots of people, uh, uh, the uh, author of the uh, Sherlock Holmes books, uh, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, uh, firmly believed that uh, Harry Houdini had supernatural powers. And Houdini assured him over and over and over again that he did not have any supernatural powers, that everything he did was a trick. Now, magicians don't like to tell how they do the trick, and so which gives them, kind of gives them this, this, this mystique that they have this supernatural power. But uh, Harry Houdini made his living by doing these, these tricks and people kept coming back to try to figure out how he did them, and if he were to tell how he did them, he wouldn't have a business anymore. Uh, but uh, Conan Doyle believed to his dying day that Harry Houdini did, in fact, have supernatural powers. In fact, there's, um, there's, there, there's some evidence uh, that uh, Sherlock Holmes, uh, the author of Sherlock Holmes, uh, was possibly in, in, involved in, um, that Doyle and some others were involved in Houdini's death, because Houdini was attempting to uh, uh, expose these, these people who claimed to have paranormal, supernatural uh, powers. Uh, Houdini, in fact, uh, was, was before Congress and uh, you know, telling how these frauds were out there. So Penn and Teller, in their evaluation of creationism and intelligent design, there are a couple of problems. Because Penn and Teller are in this tradition of Scott of, of, and, and of Harry Houdini. Do Penn and Teller apply their investigative skills consistently when it comes to the issue of evolution? They do not. Uh, can ma ma magicians who know that everything they do is a trick account for the mechanism that is said to make evolution possible? Here's the point. When Penn and Teller get up on the stage, everything they do is a trick. They know that they're not pulling a rabbit out of the hat. Uh, they know they're not making anything disappear. Uh, they know that, they, that these tricks are, are invented, are developed by other people. And yet they are willing to believe that the rabbit that they pull out of a hat uh, somehow evolved over time out of nothing. Um, William Lane Craig makes this, makes this great point. When a magician pulls a rabbit out of a hat, at least you've got a magician not to mention the hat. And so my point in all of this is that Penn and Teller, who are, who are, evol who are evolutionists and who are atheists, believe in a, in a doctrine where something, come, something comes from nothing. They actually believe in spontaneous generation. They believe in a form of black magic. And yet, when they go on stage and when they do their BS program, they are doing that uh, to expose frauds of the supernatural. Anybody who claims that he can truly pull a rabbit out of a hat, they would say, is a fraud. He's doing it's a trick. But at the same time, they're willing to believe a worldview uh, in, in which something came from nothing. Uh, so Penn and Teller need to take their, their, their very skillful act and apply it to the creation-evolution debate. And maybe one day uh, uh, Penn, uh, uh, Gillette will not uh, sign any, any, any more uh, autographs with, you know, God does not exist, and he may end up changing his license plate. Uh, maybe that day will come. Uh, but so far, uh, Penn and, and Gillette continue to... Uh, go about, uh, uh, like, like the supernaturalists that they despise, presenting a worldview, the, creation, uh, the, the evolutionary worldview, as something that truly happened, that something came from nothing. Uh, and so that would make a, a great BS program where they, uh, they actually say that they were wrong about uh, their critique of the creation-evolution debate since they've applied their own um, investigative, magic investigative skills. For more related to today's topic, check out The Religion of Evolution, a video presentation featuring Gary DeMar. You will find it at AmericanVision.com.